<laughs> we thought this was gonna end at 11.30. Woo! Stupid. Not very bright. Stupid. I can, I believe, with a great deal of authority say that Clemson is your 2016 college football playoff national ch Hold on. I guess it's, before we can say it with certainty, it's gonna be, we need to review this it is being real reviewed. quick. We need to, Ryan, can we? We get a shot. Yeah, this, this this fact is uh, this is gonna have to go under further review. Oh, okay. All right. So I assume it'll go quickly. Um, well, I just don't. I mean, it seems so clear. I don't know what there is to review right now. I couldn't. You every know? angle sort of like, pointed to the fact that this was done. Even when you watch it in live. After speed. further review, oh. we can confirm that this, in fact, was a Clemson victory. Oh well. Pretty huge. I don't have to hold I this guess. anymore. I guess. I was going to wear the hat either way. I know. It really does. It, it fits. It out, would not fit it me. It brings out my eyes. Um, so this is Clemson flag. I got a little jersey going on. Uh, Clemson is your national champion. This is gonna, my national this champion. This is going to be a real punchy live it's show, late. isn't it? It it's is late. late. It's late. What an exciting game. What a freaking amazing game. What an unbelievable effort by the Clemson offense and the Clemson defense yeah. to completely shut down Alabama after letting Bo Scarborough run wild early on and he goes down. They're just not the same offensively. They're not the same although, sort of complete although Alabama, offense. Alabama did do the thing where we were like, well, now that Clemson's taken the lead, of course Alabama will They will right do back. a and thing. they did. Right. And they, so it was setting up for, you know, it was setting up for Alabama to do that thing they've done against Old Miss right. and LSU and... I'm trying to think if they've done it to anybody else in recent memory, but like, where it's like, oh, we want your hope to be here before. Texas A&M at the your, beginning of the second chop half. Chop your legs out. Um, yes. So Clemson. Yep. Let's start at the top for mm -hmm. Clemson. Deshaun Watson, an unbelievable effort. His final college game doesn't do much on the ground, but that's okay because okay. he spread the ball around magnificently. I think yes. four receivers over 90 yards. Yeah, uh, or yeah, 85, some, somewhere in some, there. Some crazy number. Yes. Right. Uh, and Renfro, obviously, Hunter Renfro at the end of the game with the unabashed pick success yep. as the, the Tigers had earlier on in the game. And they are able to seal a national championship. Yeah. Clemson is your national, Clemson champion. Is national champion. So Deshaun Watson has a good game. What stood out to you as the sort of make or break thing in this game? Um, I guess it's just how, how much he was able to bounce back from really some some brutal hits. I mean, it started yeah. out pretty much from the beginning of the game with uh, that maybe uncalled targeting, at least called um, unnecessary roughness. Mm -hmm. He It felt like he was getting hit a lot. And Alabama in the second half, you know, we talked about before the show how, oh, they, they do all these things without sending blitzers. There was a point in this game where Alabama, uh, Jeremy Pruitt said, nah, screw that. I want to, I want to stop Ring. Deshaun Wet Watson. Well, yes no matter what, and and sent like five, six guys on uh, a number of plays. So he got he got clocked. Yes. And the fact that he was able to still stand in there mm -hmm. and still make really quality throws on a lot of these. And and we should say his receivers, even though even though for a while there that drop by Leggett looked like that was maybe gonna be the thing they were right. I mean he has a great catch to set them up down yep. at the on their last drive of the game um mike williams had it felt like three great grabs Deion kane had I, I thought a fantastic game as well and hunter and froze i mean these numbers are just stupid especially against an alabama defense that you know you you think nick saban and right. you think defensive backs you think defensive backs you think you think perfect exotic confusing coverages and right. the fact that every single one of these completions was Difficult. Yes. There weren't yes. there weren't completions for Clemson that was just like, oh, he's opened down the seam and ran nine yards after the catch before being tripped up. It wasn't like Deshaun Watson was finding guys who were not necessarily running free, but like running crisp routes and just breaking well yeah. and completing a, a workmanlike pass. There it was were, everything contested. Yeah, there were a couple Eric mentioned the middle of the field would be open right. for and there were a couple like that. Yes. But anytime they tried to go to the sides of the field or deep. Yes. It felt like there was tight coverage the whole time. Yep. Uh, and, and I mean, really, the ball placement was excellent because it didn't, even on the incompletions, it wasn't, it was just a matter of, oh, that was just, 
just couldn't get it there. There wasn't a lot of, oh boy, they really avoided disaster. Right. The receivers never had a step on an Al no. Alabama defensive no. back, which is an incredible thing, especially given how successful those guys were all year long. And the Clemson defense mm -hmm. completely came to play. They, they had the their, one huge yeah, letdown. That's their down number, I mean. Yes. That... We talked about this in the pre-show. Yeah. If they can, if they can force passing downs, yep. and how many times did we see Jalen Hurts roll out, look at his first progression, really see if there was anything there running lane-wise, and just yeah. throw it away? Yeah. It happened over and over yeah. and over yeah. again. And that Clemson defense, Brent Venables, that front, completely putting pressure, collapsing the interior of the Alabama offensive line. I thought it was an unbelievable game. You know, we focus on Deshaun Watson and the receivers, but in the trenches on both sides. We thought maybe the Clemson offensive line would be sort of a, a shortcoming. And they it was, were so it, it good was up front. Points. It at points, points, it definitely yeah. was. On the right side. <laughs> but not great. Not great on the right side. <laughs> but the fact that Clemson on defense up front, the, the, the front seven of mm -hmm. Clemson, was they had to be great all game long, and they were. Because even when Bo Scarborough was out, it's not like Damian Harris is an easy task. No, no, not at all. And and Jalen Hurts is, I mean, you saw yes. on, on the, what was the go-ahead touchdown for Alabama, yep. he, he can run the ball perfectly well. Absolutely. So, so, yeah, I think the fact that they were able to stay aggressive without most of the time over-pursuing, <laughs> leaving wide gaps in the field, yeah. that was kind of, I mean, Brent Venables called a hell of a game. A he, hell of a game. He called an excellent game. And, and, and this was a Clemson, Clemson defense that, I think really saved the game, not so much at the end, although they certainly did. Yeah. But the fact that you have two turnovers by the Tigers, both mm -hmm. on Clemson's side of the 50. Yep. And that turns into three points for Alabama. You change that to hell, even if it's just 10 points. Yeah. If you're just saying they get a touchdown on the other that's one. A, that's a pretty big win, then, 10 points then, off yes, of two then turnovers. That's, yeah. then, then this game is totally different. It's a totally different game. And I, I think it was, I don't know if it was on the first or the second turnover. I think it was after that fumble. Yeah. Um, it was a quick three and out. It was right. the, the defense immediately, even though they right. had been stressed at that moment, immediately shut down the Alabama there were even, offense. Even, even on, on some of those, it felt like, a three and out wasn't enough. It was like, we right. need to get three and out where we knock them back seven yards. How did you feel about how Alabama adjusted or didn't adjust on offense? I, I, I mean, it's tough because Bo Scarborough really did have such a good first half yeah. and moments of a good second half. And so it, it kind of felt like once he went out, just he had been such a weapon for them that I think – it's one thing to do adjust going into a game knowing we don't have somebody. Right. It's another thing when, I mean. On the fly. I, I was surprised that they ended up throwing the ball with Jalen Hurts as much as they did. I believe they Same. ended up throwing it more, like five more times than they did last year. Yeah. Uh, especially because it felt like the running game was working pretty well for them. Um, that said, you kind of say, okay, if you, you look at this card right here, if Jalen Hurts is going to give you about 200 total yards and two touchdowns and not turn the ball over, right. you kind of think that should be enough. And, and all told, you know, Bama comes, what, one play, two plays from winning this game. Absolutely so so I, don't, I really don't think that Alabama's offense lost them this game. I think some of the play calling yep. was a little odd. I think sometimes uh, a lot of passes on first down, it felt like. Yep. But on the other hand, I mean, you had a double pass. You had Jalen Hurts making a really nice play on third and long late in the game yep. to give them a makeable fourth and, fourth and one. Um, all told, I, I, I think they did well enough, but... I mean, hell, it, it kind of feels like a mirror image of last year where you say last year, Bama, you know, Bama made the one or two plays more that they needed. And this year, that was Mike Williams making circus catches. That was Jordan Leggett making a circus catch. That was, you know, uh, Clemson preventing turnovers from turning into points. Scoring 31 points against the Clemson defense as they were operating yeah. in this game should it's have been enough. Shabby. That should have been enough. Um, the fact that they, yeah, they, they didn't fully adjust in a, uh, in a productive way offensively, but listen, they relied on Bo Scarborough for a long touchdown run early, yep. which he gave them, yep. and that was great. He had a long touchdown run against Washington. Against that, that Washington team, they had, what, one touchdown drive? Mm -hmm. Drive, full-on drive. Right. So we're talking about an Alabama coaching staff that did a magnificent job of sort of piecing things together yeah. to come up with a successful formula. Because it's not in place right now to, to have a, a consistent rhythmic offense. Yeah. So I think it's a great job 
just maybe not tonight when they, they were forced to adjust. Yeah, I mean, it, it also, it's one of those games where I think if you go back and look at it, yeah. you'll say, how how did Deshaun Watson not fumble the ball more? Yes. Because he was getting hit in very yeah, unpleasant ways. Um, let's talk about the weirdest stat of Please. this game. Clemson scores 21 points in the fourth quarter. Granted, yeah. the first seven of those came because basically they were almost in the end zone at the end of the third. Alabama had not given up any points in the fourth quarter of any game since the Arkansas game, which was played, I believe, on October 8th. Eighth, yeah. We're talking, I mean, I barely had a kid then. <laughs> so that's eight fourth quarters yeah. without allowing a point. Without a single point, without a sad field goal, without a, right. we our backups are in and you got an easy touchdown, without a fluke. Like... That's insane. And for Clemson to be able to say, here's 21, that's nuts, man. That's unreal. That's freaking nuts. And I will say this is not nearly as impressive, but it is true. It is factual. It is misleading, but it is true. Alabama had not the best, not the second best, but the third best defensive performance against Clemson of any team in the state of Alabama this season. Wow. So Auburn held Clemson to what, 19? Yeah. And Troy held Clemson yeah. to 30. Wow. So there's that. That's, um, that's no, funny. Alabama had it. It was an unbelievable effort. Um, what do we want to do? We want to go to Spencer next. Do you want to yeah. go to our panelists? Do we want to talk about score predictions? What do you want to do? Let's go first to our own Spencer Hall, SB Nation College Football's own Spencer Hall, who has some some congratulatory words, I think. Some condolence words. And really, condolence. They are, but <laughs> well, it depends on it your depends angle. On who, how you feel? Here's Spencer. Hi, Alabama. I almost feel like I don't need to record this because this and the purpose of this video will be to tell you that you've lost the 2017 national title game. And we both know that didn't just happen, right? Deshaun Watson didn't beat you. You've already beaten him. The process didn't fail. The process never fails. Like Ole Miss got it a couple of times, but they don't really count. And there was that weird thing with Ohio State. But, you know, we, we, we don't talk about that. That game didn't happen. It was invalidated by weird federal laws that, you know, you invoked just to avoid losing a football game. You don't lose games very often, so I'm here to teach you how to do it, especially because as a self-avowed Florida fan, I have immense experience over the past six years. So let me help you. You should lay down for a while. Cry if it helps. Yell. Don't lash out. Lash in. Swallow those feelings. I'm a man. I'm really good at this. We're trained to do it since birth. Take a long walk, okay? Take the dog. Talk to the dog. If you have to cry cry with the dog. Dogs understand even when they don't. Maybe you pick up a hobby. I don't know. Do you know how to weld? Does anyone know how to weld? That'd be cool if you knew how to weld. That's like a really masculine sort of hobby to take up, you know? And if you're a lady watching this, you should learn to weld too. We need a nation of welders, just people with oxygen tanks in their garages waiting to explode, unregulated by the federal government. See, this is already sounding like something you would like as an Alabama fan. Out on the range, self-reliant, just creating massive steel sculptures of Nick Saban. Well, not too massive, because they can't be taller than he is, and he's not actually very tall. But you get my point. You're going to get through this, Alabama. And with any luck, you'll probably win the national title next year, because you're just that disgustingly good at football. I like that, because it felt like... I, I feel like Spencer, when he recorded that, was like, I'm recording this. If you've seen this, I've already died. <laughs> it had that vibe of like, I don't anticipate needing this soon, but just in case something happens. So uh, rest in peace, Spencer Hall. Uh, he had a great run. Yeah. Absolutely. And and congratulations. Uh, he's asked that all of his assets go towards a welding scholarship. I was say congratulations to all the future so welders great. of America. All the future welders of America. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean... <sighs> This is this is an impossible question to answer because okay. you're an Oregon fan, so I know your national championship experience. And as a Florida wow. fan, yes, I have I've had a little uh, I've been fortunate enough. You have, but Spencer's right, uh, not in recent. No, it's got how it's mad dipped. how mad can you be if you're an Alabama fan right now? Uh, well, let me let me tell you, as did, a, did, as an Oregon did, fan did. who has been in this place twice yeah. these past what six seven years, yeah, uh, you can't be all that mad. It's gonna hurt right now. Yeah, but. Listen, signing day is in, what, three weeks? Yeah. And that's the second championship. Uh, you got this far. And you, honestly, you are now at the point where you're going to say, we almost won a national championship with a true freshman who went like 11 of 84. Right, who didn't play particularly. Right, and we, we almost, almost won. a national won. championship going, uh, converting two third downs. Yeah, this is good. Two! This is good. This is a low point. That's less than the down number. The down number is three. <laughs> 
This, if if this is the low point in your recent you're history, you're totally fine. You're fine. I don't feel you're bad. totally fine, and I feel I feel pretty comfortable that preseason rankings. Yeah. Crimson Tide. I think they're going to be right there. I am not I worried. I think they're going to be right there. Um, let's talk about, we we did ask you guys for uh, score predictions before the game. Yeah. This was fun to keep up with because, if uh, you know, going through the Twitter mentions, I'm like, all right, this is the area. Nope. Uh, oh, well, another score. Okay. I need, mm -hmm. All right. So the final score of this game, 35-31. We had a bunch of people get very close. David Frank, uh, Hawk Realist, mm -hmm. Clue Haywood, all guessed 34-31 Clemson. Yeah. Aaron Montgomery guessed 35-32. Yeah. But Brian Hodge nailed it On for this game. The head. 35-31. Brian, we promise to shower you with praise and affection. Uh, if you come to New York, you can have my job because I'm not good at it. But okay. Nope. Um, Just go with it. <laughs> well, I'm the one who has to host a show with Brian Hodge, <laughs> so you... and I don't know if I have chemistry <laughs> with him. We barely have chemistry. That's with true. No, stop. Uh, very true. Brian Hodge, you are uh, a champion. You are our, our college football picking lord and savior. Sure. I think that's fair. Um, that fits with Dabo. So, so great job. Yeah. Um, this was completely, even though Clemson was in the national title last year, mm -hmm. sort of a month, month and a half into the season, this seemed sort of unforeseen. It, it didn't seem possible that I, Clemson I, was going to be able to weather a mistake prone. Uh, theme of their season. Yeah, so we've we've talked about this before. How uh, I believe we talked about it right after the new, the semifinal. Yeah. That Clemson is one of the rare teams that over the last couple of years has this insane record in games where they turn the ball over multiple times. Right. They, they you, you know, you hope to be a couple games over 500, and yeah. Clemson has only lost once, and I believe it was last year. Right. Um, or no, it was the pick game. It yes. Was the pick game this year. Um, so, and that was barely losing, too. It yeah, wasn't killer. Right. So so on the one hand, I guess we should have looked at that history and said, yeah, they can deal with that. Right. On the other hand, a lot of that history didn't come against teams as good as Alabama. Right. Um, it's hard. It's it's so hard at the end of the season to say what mattered and what didn't because we can look back and, say, you know, you can spin this in any narrative you want. You sure. can say, well, they needed the Troy game and the NC State game and even the pit loss to sort of, like, teach them that they had to find a second level and – push harder and push farther and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And you can say, oh, the SEC wasn't a true gauntlet this season and that didn't push. I mean, you can play the Lane Kiffin card if you want. Sure. It'll at the In the end, it just feels like this is a great game that Clemson managed to do this much more than. This is sort yep. of like watching the 100-meter final in a non-Usain Bolt year mm -hmm. and seeing like, oh, that guy won by two one-hundredths of a second. This what part. could that guy have done differently? Basically nothing. They did the same thing. Basically nothing. They were both excellent teams. Clemson put everything together in a slightly neater fashion. Like, yeah. Um, we have another treat, do we not? Rice Krispie. Rice. No, we, have, we, have. we do. We, uh, we asked a bunch of our college football colleagues to look ahead to next season and not let's, – let's do a little transparency. Okay. Here. This was not – we did this last year with you, me, Jason, and Spencer. Yes. The goal of this was not pick a, the playoff that you think will happen. Right. It's – this year we said pick a team that you think has a reasonable chance of making the playoff just from a mathematical perspective. And right. And you would like to see there. For instance, Dan last year had Arkansas and Oregon. As everybody his, did. Among his four. Yeah. So obviously this is not a very serious no. endeavor, but we asked our colleagues all the same. Uh, we asked them for one team, four colleagues. Here's maybe what the playoff will look like next year, but probably not. I'd really like to see the Oregon Ducks in the playoff the 2017 season. I think that we could use another Western champion in college football. Been a while. I think the last one was 2004 with USC. Uh, they have a lot of really exciting players on their team. Young quarterback Justin Herbert was uh, was really effective in his freshman year, and we didn't notice it because Oregon was pretty bad around him and didn't play much defense, but he'll be back. Royce Freeman is a great running back. He'll be back. Uh, Darren Carrington, one of their best receivers, he announced he's coming back. Their left tackle is coming back. They got Jim Levitt to come help out Willie Taggart, coach up some defense like he did at Colorado, where he took one of the worst defenses in the country and made it one of the best within just a couple of years. Um, Willie Taggart's a really likable guy. I, I've loved everything I've ever read about the guy. I think he's a cool story coming up through South Florida, winning at WKU in South Florida, and then finding his way there. 
And I think the Ducks are just a lot of fun. And we could use not only a Western champion, but, uh, you know, kind of an exciting offense that uh, we got used to really loving under Chip Kelly and, and Mark Helfrick even for a time. And then we sort of forgot about it when their defense crumbled. I think they'd be a lot of fun to watch in the playoff and, and to see how they could do. So the one team that I would love to see in next year's college football playoff would be Penn State, actually. And I was going to say Virginia Tech, but then they just lost their quarterback. Um, Penn State returns their quarterback, was really good. Joe Moorhead in his second season at Fordham actually had a tremendous jump up in offense, which is kind of terrifying when you think about what they did late this season. They get Saquon Barkley back for another year. They have Miles Sanders coming up. They are a little thin on defense, but they still have more than enough to be able to split the difference again in some sort of freeway tie with Michigan and Ohio State. And then for a lot of non-football reasons, Penn State is an extremely polarizing team that's outside of the South, uh, creates a lot of opinion and conjecture, and I'm totally down for that. I'm going to go ahead and put LSU in the playoff. Uh, it's, it's the same mistake I made last year, and I don't believe in changing, uh, changing what works. Ed Orgeron. America has not been properly introduced to this man. The personality, the love for the game and all that, you know, how, how much his, his team loves him, his players love him, all that stuff. This past year, I picked him for the, I picked him to win the title um, because I'm not very smart. And I'm not going to do that this year. This year, I'm just going to hope they make it. That, that feels a little bit safer. We're talking about a very talented team again. Uh, you lose Leonard Fournette, but he was hurt all this past year. And Darius Geis took over, all SEC running back. Uh, don't ask about the quarterback situation because it doesn't matter. You don't need those to win in the SEC West. Um, that's not a position that is used in that division as far as I'm aware. Uh, you got four or five-star talent all across the roster. You might have a top five recruiting class coming in. Um, this is for everyone who enjoyed less miles football, which was you know the patented last second bizarre ending, which is literally how he got fired. He he finally went the wrong way for him. Um, I think you're going to get a little bit of that too. It's still going to be fun. You're bringing in two of the country's best coordinators, Matt Canada from Pitt. You're keeping Dave Aranda to coach the defense. This is a uh, this is an excellent coaching staff with a lot of excellent players, and LSU is always weird. So, go Tigers. Dear viewer, it is with a heavy heart that I must select the college football team traditionally capable of ruining everything for everyone, the Auburn Tigers, as 2017 playoff candidates. You say, oh, the loss is on defense. True, they lose Montrevious Adams and Carl Lawson, but they've been rotating fresh talent in across the board, especially at the defensive line. And if we know anything about an Auburn squad, they need linebackers, who they return all of, and a solid D-line. So taking care of that, that goes to the offense. Well, what about the offense? Do they have a quarterback? Yes, they have incoming transfer Jarrett Stidham, a highly touted recruit who finally gets a chance to work in a freewheeling, run-first, spread offense. Uh, he's going to be a serious upgrade at the position, and he'll have Sean White, experienced starter, backing him up. Uh, they return Cameron Petway, an outstanding running back who the entire offense keys around. They haven't had anyone like that at Auburn since Trey Mason. And they did pretty well last time when they had a running back they could build the entire offense around. Lastly, schedule. Do they play Alabama? Yeah, they play Alabama. Let's just stop talking about Alabama, okay? We got to live with that. We got to get around it. You got to just, eventually they'll lose, all right? You got to have hopes and dreams, even though you know how this story ends, right? That's how you have to approach Alabama at this point. The only other serious hiccup on their schedule with most of their games and conference games landing at Jordan-Hare, they play at Clemson, who they played tight with inferior teams in the past to this one, and they have to go to LSU, who I don't think they've won in Baton Rouge since 1999, but uh, remember, you, you got to have dreams, even if they're impossible, like beating LSU in Baton Rouge. So, uh, War Eagle? Okay, so yeah. this playoff, if it's just what they pick, we have Penn State, Oregon, LSU, LSU, Auburn. Yes, two uh, SEC teams. Two, uh, so, so then we're looking at two teams that fired coaches in the <laughs> yeah. last 12 months. Yep. Uh, really in the last, like, six months. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got one coach, two coaches that I think were kind of on the hot seat this year. Yep. Uh, one far exceeded expectations in James Franklin. The other one, Gus Malzahn, I would say... Just righted the ship. Yes, got it pointing in the right trajectory. Um, I uh, man, this would be weird. This would be uh, very weird. So also, me... I don't know why Spencer's saying it's hard to win in Baton Rouge. Florida did it, and Florida's not good. <laughs> uh, let me just knock that Oregon pick right. <laughs> let me just save okay, any right. Oregon fans so who have got, just tuned so we've in. So we got Big Ten, Pac-12, two SEC teams. Yes, no ACC, let's, no Big let's, Twelve. Let's find some other. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, my pick. Five love. I I correctly picked the national championship because of the quarterback situation. Sure, because you are smarter than me. Uh, I am going to go with another team that has a, a very advantageous quarterback situation in 2017. Oklahoma State. State. Mason that Rudolph. Good. That was fun. To James Washington. Yeah. That's what that's what I'm picking. I like their defense. They were able to develop a running game later Do on. Do they in the play season. Central Michigan again? I have no idea. Okay. But Hopefully I feel like I feel like if they can avoid <laughs> that bullet, then they're gonna be all right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really like I really like Oklahoma State. Okay. I like what they look like later on in the season. Um, so you already took a Big Twelve team. I yeah. kind of would like to I, I would have liked to say Texas. Yeah. Just because Man, there are a lot of things. I mean, first of all, I feel like that would somewhat talented team that would ease up sort of the bad feelings towards Charlie Strong. Because it'd be yeah. like, okay, we can admit you did some things to make this team better. Yeah. Uh, it'd be great for Tom Herman. Uh, it would be really funny if Texas got into the college football playoff and Ohio State didn't. Because did you they, hear, by the way, what Charlie Strong was doing with writers in at Tampa? No. In push-up contest. He was not doing a. He took out a Texas roster yeah. to show the writers, like, recruited this guy, <laughs> recruited that guy, recruited that guy, recruited that guy. That's so, good. yeah, he, he left a, a lot That's for good. Tom Herman. Um, so I, I'll go ACC. It's okay. tough because Florida State looks really good. I'm yeah. not going to pick them. Sorry. Okay. Um, Louisville. <laughs> showed a lot this year. Yeah, showed a lot this year, but. Uh, Faded it big time. You're, you're asking me to to wish for good things for Bobby Petrino and or Todd Grantham. And, yeah, and this is know, about you, like, celebrating this is, this what you feels. like. Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah. Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah. Who will tell you, oh, their official social media account will tell you, 3-0 and against yeah. SEC teams this year. This is true. They play Tennessee to start the season next season mm -hmm. in Atlanta. If they beat Tennessee to start the year... Zoom. Playoff bound. And you know what? And now, granted, they lose a very talented quarterback. Yeah. But they bring back their top two rushers, I believe, were both okay. underclassmen. Uh, and, you know, I think having guys who have a lot of reps and a lot of success in that offense doesn't hurt you. And I believe the ACC. And it's Georgia Tech. They're just freaking weird. It'd be awesome. <laughs> It'd be awesome if Georgia Tech won 11 games, got into the college football playoff, and then somebody was like, just because then, I, that's the point, I think, where we would feel the most argument about, hey, listen, it really matters if we're the three or the four here. Because right. we can be the four. We don't really want to play Georgia Tech right, right. now. That's we don't fine. want any, none that's of that. Fine. We know how Alabama will hurt us. At Georgia Tech, it's just different, and I don't like it. Um, Georgia Tech, uh, God, they're playing in a conference with, I guess, the five most efficient quarterbacks making their way out. Right. So it's Trubisky, yeah. Peterman, yeah. Watson, Kaya, and Gerard Evans. Yeah. So it could be kind of a free-for-all in the man. ACC. Who knows? We'll see what happens, but Clemson's Florida not going to Florida State's going to win the ACC. Florida State's going to win the ACC. Probably. But their coach, Georgia Tech's coach, also has the best um, way to describe an offense that can't run the ball, right? Which is? Paul Johnson, they couldn't run the ball the length of, I, I forget what exactly he referenced. You know what I'm talking about? I don't. Okay, I'll explain it to you after okay, the show. It's an good. adult themed. That's good. Plus, they, um, ripped, they ripped up Georgia's hedges. And Georgia yes, they did. Super that bad was very fun. Because Georgia treats college football like it's a. Uh, like it's a neighborhood. Tea time? Like it's a neighborhood. Yeah. Like, hey, the homeowners association is going to hear about this. Um, let's talk about the bingo board. Yes. We hit bingo this year. Um, I don't think we kept the bingo board updated throughout the game. I think no. once we hit bingo. Where do we do it? We hit it, but you see we hit it across the bottom there. And believe it or not, it was Danny Ford that gave us bingo. There was one point during the broadcast really? where they weren't even talking about it, which was kind of weird, but they were just showing images of um, – Danny Ford and that Clemson team at the White House with Ronald oh. Reagan. But it was, like I said, it was weird because I don't think... Did uh, they not say his name? I don't think Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit were talking about... I, 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 if I recall correctly, there was a fourth down coming up. I think okay. it was the fourth and one where Clemson ended up pooching it. Right. Um, so, yeah. We're counting it. Danny Ford led Clemson to championship then, led us to bingo championship, bingo championship now. tonight. It's wonderful. So Do we have anything else? It is very late. It is pretty late. Um, this is great. Clemson, national champion. It's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, shout out to our co-worker, Jessica, who, oh, yeah. who is a Cubs fan and a Clemson is, and a Notre Dame fan. Jessica, yeah. if you thought we were going to let you off the damn hook for being a Notre Dame fan, Notre Dame went 4-8, and eight, and nothing the Cubs can do will change that. Wow. Um, okay. Sorry. 
We love so, you. We love you all. On that note, thank you to <laughs> everybody for watching the show. Thank you to our terrific crew for staying up very, very late. And thank you. Are we going to do another wake up like at 6 a.m. this morning? What are we doing? No, oh, hell no. Are we this doing is, like a? This is. Listen, we will see. We will see people again at some point. Yeah. But like. You guys, this guy was tired at 9.30. I was. I very at much some was. Point, at some point, he looked over and said, if I was watching this on the West Coast, I would. I, now I would be tired. I would be tired now as well. Yeah. Okay. It has truly been an incredible season. We've had a wonderful time doing this every weekend after the games. It's been a great year. Good for Clemson. Your national champions. Good for everybody. Everybody had fun. Except for people that watch the Oregon defense in the Notre Dame season. Disagree. I had a lot of fun watching the Oregon okay. defense. With that... Thank you very much. We'll see you later.